Madrid there, really. And uh, and he turns up on the big occasions. He's one of those players who who seems to thrive on the big moment, and and you just can't sleep on him because you can you can have a game where maybe Real Madrid are, are keeping possession a little bit. Modric is dictating the tempo, and then suddenly uh, Benzema's on the move and on the prowl inside the box. So he's an absolute classic striker. He's the kind of striker who scores. Uh, and thrives in Champions League games. We've seen players like that before, who can who can maybe cruise through uh, domestic seasons and then and then really deliver in the big moments. And he's he's done that time and time again. It's an interesting tie we're we're looking ahead uh, to Andrew because I mentioned before that there is has been changes in personnel. One of the massive changes that we're seeing in this fixture is that Rudiger is now playing on the other side. Mm -hmm. Chelsea, they've missed him so much this season. And uh, that steel, that resolve that they usually have missing has now gone to Real Madrid and it has helped them. Yes, in the games he played, he has been really immense. Um, because again, the characteristics that he brings, it's, it's a defender who loves to defend. Mm -hmm. He loves a battle, he loves a physical challenge. And he loves keeping the ball out of his goals, which are huge qualities to have as a, as a defender. The way the football is played now is not just passing, passing and, and organising. You, you want to have those defenders who want to get the ball. And he's a front-footed defender. He's not going to wait on you to come at him. He's going to try to initiate um, or be proactive. So. And it's, it's a bit of a surprise in regards to Rodega now because we're hearing that he's not in the starting lineup. I'm going to go discuss in detail as to um, how that will play out for Real Madrid a little bit later on. But as we transition to Chelsea, uh, Simon Evans, um, th they seem to have a, a little bit of luck in you know changing managers mid season and then they go on to win the European Champions League. It, it has happened with uh, Matteo and it happened with Tuchel, of course. Uh, the firing of Graham Potter. I suspect we can all agree that it was the right decision. Um, how do you think this will play out now with Frank Lampard at the, at the helm? Is that the right decision? Well, it's, 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 it's a convenient decision, isn't it? Mm. I mean, they're, they're basically just filling the gap till the end of the season. And the bonus for Frank Lampard is he gets a shot at the job again. I mean, no matter what anyone says about them looking for other coaches, which they undoubtedly are, uh, and about Lampard really being just a stopgap solution. If they can't win this game tonight and they can knock Real Madrid out of the Champions League in the return leg, then people are going to start talking about Frank Lampard getting his job back. There's absolutely no doubt about that. That's the way this crazy business with managers goes. So, and you look at the Chelsea's lineup and you look at that midfield they're putting out tonight Kante, Fernandez, Kovacic. That's a top Champions League midfield. <laughs> you know, it is. You know, we're talking about a team that, that, that's that been struggling in the Premier League. Um, and, you know, Raheem Sterling and Jao Felix up but, front. But Simon, Interesting point. but Simon, we're not playing football manager here, right? And that's the issue. They had so many players in the squad. They didn't even have space to hold all of them. And there has been contention there. So, yeah, of course, their, their names look fabulous. But can they play together? That's a big question, Simon. Yeah, but you find sometimes that when you come into these big games like this, where the pressure is really on, where you have to be 100% focused, where they're the underdogs, that somehow it does gel together. You find something. I mean, managers save their jobs by suddenly finding something when a player's injured and they have to adjust their formation. And it's exactly the same for a new man coming in. So there's no reason at all why this really good group of players that Chelsea has. I mean, you look at that starting lineup and you think, yeah, they should be Champions League quarterfinals, <laughs> but they just haven't been showing that at all, at all. And maybe Lampard is lucky and he stumbles across the right formation and it just clicks for him. Yeah, that's the hope I, I suggest. But Juan, what, what have been these on-field issues that Chelsea's having? Um, or is it just about, you know, the usual heart and determination and they are not gelling together and all that jazz? What has been the issue for Chelsea? Well, for starters, having so much confusion at, uh, at the managerial standpoint uh, at times. Uh, we, I mean, Graham Potter, is, as much as a, his intentions were good uh, as a manager, just really couldn't find or really didn't understand or was trying to look to implement his system with players that really didn't fit in. It's a combination of a lot of things. I can't go and say that one reason was the sole reason for Chelsea's uh, basic debacle in, in the Premier League and success in, in, in the Champions League. So w when you look at it, it's just players that haven't been able to, to, to come in. They, some have suffered injuries. Some have been inconsistent. 
Um, you know, Joao Felix truly hasn't been able to gel or, or come through into his own ever since coming from Atletico Madrid. Mudrik, well, I don't know. I, I didn't know he was in the lineup. I didn't know he was on the squad still. But when you look at these types of players and, and how they come in, you see the emergence of a player like Enzo Fernandez, and all of a sudden Frank Lampard says, I have a leader for the future. So, so it ends up being a very interesting set of situations where you see certain players begin to flourish, but then all overall, collectively, you've seen a team that hasn't been able to really get out of their own way. Hmm. It's time to take a look at the starting lineups now, and we're going to start with Real Madrid. And Andrew, we're going to go revisit the point that we mentioned earlier in terms of the Real Madrid starting lineup and them not having Rudiger in there. They have Alaba in there. Uh, he could play left back. They have decided to go with Kamavinga. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, he's been playing there for a while, so he's used to the position. And we don't usually question Ancelotti. But what are your thoughts on this? No, um, one mentioned a good point with, with Valverde in terms of his, his awareness tactically, his engine, mm -hmm. and also other qualities he brings to his strength. Um, Kamavinga is, is pretty similar to that. As, as a midfielder, he wins a lot of balls for you. He drives the play forward. And as a left back, it's not the first he has been playing there. He has played there a couple of weeks now. He has been doing very well at left back. So the fact that Fernand Mendy is available as their first choice left back, and they're now thinking about moving on Fernand Mendy, it says a lot about Kamavinga in that position that the coaches and the hierarchy at Real Madrid feel comfortable with him playing there. But you may question whether his future is at left back or they just might want to find a new left back. To, to replace Mendy, but um, Kamavinga, he will do a good job there. Uh, what I'm going to bring you into this discussion because I'm not sure if he's going to be uh, having an easy time against one uh, Reese James. Uh, what are your thoughts on Kamavinga playing in that position? Well, I, yeah, I, I agree with you with that, but then you start looking at who they have available, he's probably the one that matches up best. Hmm. It's, 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 it's not about who, who ends up playing best, it's, it's the one who ends up playing, I guess, not least worst because it sounds kind of derogatory, but but it's, it's the one that matches up the best and can try and neutralize the, the imposing threat that is there. Not only that, Kamavinga can also push up a little bit more, basically making it from a numerical standpoint a little bit more even, dropping back Valverde whenever he has to be in a more defensive function. So you end up having the, about the same, you, know, you have sometimes five players in the middle to kind of match up what Chelsea's doing in order to flood the midfield. Yeah. So, so it's not just him playing low alone as a left back. Yes, he's going to go on the attack, but defensively he can defend a little bit higher and try and neutralize Reese James on that sector. All right, let's take a look at the Chelsea starting lineup now. And you did mention the five-man midfield that they do have a one around goal, including the likes of Chil Chilwell, Kovacic, Fernandez, Conte, of course, recently returning to the starting lineup, mm -hmm. and James Simon. Uh, your thoughts on this Chelsea lineup? Yeah, I like it. I mean, I like it on paper. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is this is exactly what we've been talking about. But I mean, mm -hmm. that three in the midfield is outstanding. The two wing backs, if they're fit and ready to go as at their maximum potential, offer a real, real, real positive for Chelsea in this game. Because when we look at English teams against teams from Spain and Italy in the Champions League in particular, it's the ability of those wing backs that we see so often in the Premier League, powering forward, turning in from defence into attack, that is really one of the big uh, pluses for, for Premier League teams. And Chelsea have two very good ones then. I mean, I'm a little bit looking at the attack as perhaps mm. the weak point of that side because, you know, neither of them have been in great form. There's not much of a physical presence there if they need an out ball. But, um, you know, it's, it's a Chelsea side that, that, that should be competitive. I mean, it could, well, as I say, it comes down to one of those crazy situations. We've got a new manager coming in. Can he pull something off with this side? Or if they don't come together and they don't gel, they could get an absolute tub in here. Felix as a striker, paired along with Raheem Sterling. Do you see the goals coming from either of them? Because they, they have to be playing in a particular style for them to really get involved in this game. And with a five-man midfield behind them, how do they play with them? They have to play connected, so it can't be that Felix and, and Sterling are isolated and you play long balls up to them. That won't work. They're too small in stature um, players. So Chelsea will have to build the play mm. or play in areas like the channels where Sterling can be the one who runs into more 
being a typical winger player playing centrally. Um, but earlier I mentioned, just to digress a little bit, this is a consequence of planning. Like you, you bring in all these players and you tell somebody to figure it out. It's not as easy as that. There has to be a, a blueprint, a template, and you find the players to, to fit it. So that's the situation they're in now where there's no consistency in terms of game model. Mm -hmm. But to support Simon's point, these are top players, well-played players, looking at the league table and knowing that they won't be in the Champions League next year. If they don't perform but here. But here's a, 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 a window. Out. Yep, and with that, predictions. Still Real Madrid, 2-1. I'm on a 2-1 streak yeah, for the day. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, fine. We would call that lazy writing. But uh, Juan, your <laughs> thoughts? It, it, it's, with Chelsea, it's going to depend where Enzo Fernandez ends up playing. If he's going to be playing further back, it's going to be a really long night. If they put him a little bit higher up alongside Joel Felix and Raheem Sterling, it could be a very interesting uh, way to nourish them forward. So predictions? Uh, but at the, how can you go against Real Madrid in the Champions League? You can. 3-0. Three 3-0? Nil. Predict, three three nil. Nil. Wow. Okay, uh, Simon. I'm sorry. I, I I gotta go against the, you know I gotta go against you know the guy that's looking more for a third base coach than an actual football <laughs> manager. Sorry. Exactly. Simon, your thoughts, predictions? Look, everything suggests Real Madrid win this game with some comfort, doesn't it? Um, but I've been talking about how strange things happen in football, so I suppose I better stick to that and be a little bit different from the guys and say that somehow Chelsea uh, escape from uh, the Bernabeu with a 2-2 draw. Well, well, it is with great pleasure now we send you across to the Bernabeu for this matchup between the most recent uh, European winners out of Spain and England. We present to you Real Madrid against Chelsea.